Page 14. In this tutorial, we're going to look at how to create buildings uh, for physical models. Uh, this means you don't have to use laser cutters and 2D, you can actually create it in 3D in a cheap and effective way, um, saving time and money. So, we're going to look at two options on how to do this in 3ds Max and just see how they go when we send them to the 3D printer. So, let's start with standard primitive. Let's go with a box and we'll just change the parameters of that so that they're 30 meters by 30 meters by 80 meters uh, we'll make them six segments by six by six okay the first way we're going to create this building is by putting a number of modifiers on so let's start with um, let's start with a subdivide modifier okay there we go we can see that's added quite a few polygons Next, we're going to add a mesh smooth. All right, now with mesh smooth, we've got to make sure that the subdivision method is classic, and that the classic, and that the um, smoothing parameters are set to one. Okay. Next, we're going to put a vertex weld on. And we're going to change that threshold to 1 as well. Okay, on top of that, we're going to put an edit poly. And edit poly, we'll select animate, select polygon. And we'll just go and select all the polygons. Now, Edit Poly allows you to then inset on each of those polygons. So select Inset, go to the icon there. That takes you to this icon in the middle. Go by polygon. Let's change it to point three and select. Okay, and that's just left us with. Uh, what will be a mesh shape when we um, delete the mesh? So let's go delete mesh. Now we can see we've got a number of polygons all put together with a lot of empty space, but overall it looks like a building. So we need to thicken up these walls. So we're going to do that by adding a shell. All right. Make these a bit more rounded. So we're going to do a turbo smooth. Okay, that's looking better interesting geometry there and uh, we might just increase the uh, polygon count a little bit smooth it out a bit more make that two and now we have a very interesting shape um, you got to be very careful with turbo smooth it does make the computer go very small uh, it does make the computer go very slow, but you can see why I've got such an interesting shape there. Uh, and hopefully that will print off with the 3D printer just like that. And we'll be able to put that into our physical model. The second way we're going to experiment with these mesh shapes is a lot simpler, but uh, we do have some concerns about it. So let's go back to standard primitives, create a box. Okay, let's give it the same parameters, 30 by 30 by 80 segments, we'll keep the same. Might make it a bit more interesting this time in modifier, let's um, give it a bit of a twist. Uh, 
just a little bit there. So that's the angle, slight twist there. And uh, we might give it a taper. So let's look at um, how we do this. Give it a slight taper like that. Just a bit different. You can see I'm a landscape architect. And finally, to get the same mesh, we're just going to try and do it through creating a modifier of a lattice. Okay, so there's our lattice and instantly you can see that it's not really the shape we want so we're going to reduce our joints right down okay and it's starting to look a bit more like a building we might and just bring those so the radius of the uh, struts down to a meter okay now here there's a few concerns with the 3D printer, we need to have a closed object, and because we've got such small nodes, you can see here that the 3D printer may reject this, this model. Um, so, what we're going to do is just increase the radius to a metre. That's closed it somewhat but still looks a bit dodgy. So we're just going to increase to say 1.2. Not entirely sure this is going to work. But worth a try anyway. Um, and we might just try and make these a little less square. These, um, these struts. So I'm going to add a tessellate. Alright, that's given it a bit more thickness, looks like it's a bit more watertight. Mm. We might just increase that a little bit. Alright, so there we have it, two mesh models that a 3D printer will hopefully recognise. And they won't cost much to print because there's so much blank space. But in a model, they will look like quite a nice addition, particularly if you uh, made quite a few. And as we saw, you can actually do some interesting things with them. So before we send it to the to, uh, reduce the scale so that they are at a size that the 3D printer can actually print at. Uh, so what we're going to do is change the viewport to front. There's our two buildings. We've got um, the first one here, which we'll just select. We've got uh, scale selected there. Scale. And then we're going to go 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and 0 0.1 on the three axes down the bottom here. And then what we've got is a much smaller building. That's an in uh, physical model size. So um, just to check the size, what we can do is select the object and then quite handy feature of, is to go select this one here, the hammer, um, select measure and then we've got our dimension. So now we know this is nine centimeters tall um, by 0.3 by uh, 3.9 and 3.9 centimeters on the x and y axes. So the volume, which is actually what we're going to be paying for for the printing of this, is sort of unknown at the moment. But um, hopefully it's not so small that the 3D printer can't manage it. All right, let's go and repeat that. Repeat that with our second building which is here, select that, scale, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, alright, let's have a closer look, ok, 
Okay, and there he is. Okay. So, this one, 8 centimeters by 3 by 3. So that's good. Um, good size to be printing. Okay, now I've got these two buildings to scale. We want to export them at the right, uh, as the right file extension. So we'll select them, go to export, and we're after STL file. We'll call this a mesh building. Save it on the hard drive. Okay, okay. Now we go to the FabLab website. There she is, the, uh, the beautiful big uh, 3D printer. And um, we just enter our details there, add the file, and off it goes. Now we can't do this remotely, so I'm gonna have to do it at uni, and uh, I'll report back on the success or failure of this uh, little project, but thanks for listening.